This lesson deals with resistor capacitor Laplace transform examples. You can find these notes in the ECE202 ebook in chapter 10, starting on page 5. Let's go back and take a look at an example we did in ECE201 in chapter 7 on pages 5 and 6. This is a circuit that had a 12 volt source, a single pole single throw switch that closes at t equals 0, and a resistor and a capacitor. Can you solve for the voltage across the capacitor and the current through the resistor as a function of time? I'm going to do these problems in a 5 step algorithm. The first step will be to find the initial conditions. With the switch open for a long time, we have no connection, and so no current's flowing. Let's assume that we have a fresh capacitor. This is one we just purchased, and so there's no initial charge on it. So our initial voltage then would be zero. Step two would be to transform the circuit into the S domain. No current in here and no voltage here. The voltage across these two terminals is zero for T less than zero. And then at T equal to zero, we jump then from zero to 12 volts. That sounds like our step function. So let's draw an equivalent circuit with our 12 volt source and switch as 12 over S. Now the capacitor has a zero initial condition and our initial condition was a step function and it's gonna be equal to zero. So all we have is just the impedance of the capacitor which is one over SC. So one over one microfarad would be 10 to the sixth over S. Step three will be to perform the S domain circuit analysis. So the current flowing in this circuit is gonna be the voltage which is 12 divided by S divided by the total impedance which was a 1K resistor and a one microfarad capacitor whose impedance is 10 to the sixth over S. Now I need to make this look like our forms in our Laplace transform table. So let's multiply through here by S, numerator and denominator. So I'll get 12, S times 1K, and then 10 to the sixth. Let's pull out a 1K from the denominator, and that would put a 1K reciprocal in the numerator. So that would make that 12 milli divided by S, and then 10 to the sixth divided by 10 to the three would be 10 to the three or just 1K. Now the voltage across the capacitor would just simply be this current times the impedance of the capacitor. So multiplying these two, 12 times 10 to the minus 3 times 10 to the 6, 10 to the 3, and then S times S plus 1K. Step 4 in the algorithm will be to perform a partial fraction expansion if it's necessary. And so let's do that. The current through the resistor is actually in the form of our table, just a simple root, and we can find the inverse Laplace transform that pretty easily. But the capacitor voltage, we have a denominator with two terms in here, S times S plus 1K. So we could write that as some K1 over S plus K2 over S plus 1K. To find the value of K1, we'll then multiply our capacitor voltage by S and then let S equal zero. And again, we get a term cancellation and then you get 12K over 1K or 12. To find K2, we'll multiply this expression by S plus 1K and then let S equal minus 1K. So this cancels with this and we have 12K over minus 1K and that's a minus 12. Step five in the algorithm will be to find the inverse Laplace transform. For our current, we had 12 milli over S plus 1K, so that's just simply 12 milli times e to the minus 1k times t, times u of t. We're looking at this for t greater than zero. Now, as we showed in ECE 201, I usually write this as minus t divided by one over 1k, which would be one milli. The reason for doing that is that we can have an interpretation for time constants. And so the time constant here is one millisecond. And at five time constants, this term will basically vanish. For a capacitor voltage, we had 12 over s minus 12 over s plus 1k. The inverse Laplace transform of this is just simply the step function. The inverse Laplace transform of this step function is u of t. Here we've got a root at minus 1k, so we have e to the minus alpha times t times u of t and then times 12. Could pull out a common 12 here. I have 1 minus e to the minus t over tau. And again, writing this 1k as 1 over 1k times u of t. Should note here that the value of I sub r and V sub c of t were exactly the same values we found in ECE 201 in chapter 7 on pages 5 to 6. Next, consider an example of having a battery V sub A connected with a single pole double throw switch with an R and C in series. Can you transform this circuit into the S domain and use the Laplace transforms to solve for V sub C of T? Let's use our five step algorithm. So the first step is to find the initial conditions. Now with the switch in this position for a long time, got a DC circuit and the capacitor will look like an open circuit in steady state. So we've got no current flowing and so the voltage across the resistor is equal to zero and so the capacitor voltage is the same as the battery voltage. So that would be V sub A. Our second step is to transform this into the S domain. At t equals zero, this becomes a short, and so we just have a short back to ground, but I have an initial condition. I'm gonna use my equivalent circuit to represent that capacitor with an impedance and then with an initial condition. Here's my short circuit with the switch, my resistor R, and then my capacitor whose impedance is one over SC, and then my initial condition of V sub A divided by S. Now let's do the S domain circuit analysis and solve for the voltage V sub C of S. Now this is the voltage across the entire combination here. 
I really have a voltage divider if you look at it from the right to the left. So my resistance R is voltage dividing with this capacitor, R over R plus 1 over SC, and then my source is V sub A over S. Let's multiply through by this S, so I've got S times R plus 1 over C, and the numerator V sub A times R. Let me divide through by R, numerator and denominator, so I just get V sub A, and then S plus 1 over RC. Now we already have it in the form of our table, so we just jump to step 5. And so let's find the inverse Laplace transform. It's going to be V sub A, and this is going to be E to the minus alpha times T, and alpha is equal to 1 over RC. We already got the reciprocal here, so we've got our time constant tau as r times c. I multiply this by u of t, so this is valid for t greater than or equal to zero. And these are some examples of using the Laplace transform to solve RC switching circuits.